Savage Finance, because it's a jungle out there that wants your money. Here I will teach you how to manage the jungle and make it out. Oh no, you did it. Ah, this is one of the worst financial decisions that you could ever make in life. Financing a car. Welcome to another episode of Savage Finance. This is your host, Glendon Cameron, serial digital entrepreneur, and I'm gonna here to teach you about money and how to make it out the money jungle. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to like, be sure to comment, and also be sure to go back to the beginning of the channel and start watching the videos one by one. Each video is to enhance the video before it. So this is critical information to help you in your financial life. So let's begin. Everybody does it. Everybody finances a car. You typically, you know, unless your parents gave you a car, which is a good thing, you financed your first car. I have financed two cars in life. And the first one really wasn't that bad because I was in the military and I had been saving up money for years. And I bought a $15,000 car and I put down 4,000. So I put down almost 30% and I paid it off and my car payment was like 200 bucks per month. However, I really wish that I had saved up and paid cash. Once again, my second car, which was a, a Nissan Maxima, I financed and I paid way too much. I've made every stupid financial mistake that you can imagine before I got on the right path. This is why you should not finance a car if you're making 30, 40, 50, 60, or $70,000 a year. Financing cars rob you of your spending power. They rob you of money. Let's say you go out and you get yourself a car and your interest rate is an astonishing 28%. You're literally going to pay, if the car is 7,000, you're gonna pay $17,000 for that car because the interest is compounded daily. Financing cars is one of the worst things you can do. This is what happens. You go to the car dealership, they woo, they sing, they do a little dance, and they get you in the F&I room. I used to sell cars finance and insurance room. They get you in there and they work you and work you and work you. And whatever payment you say, it's always gonna be 20 to $50 a month more. They're gonna crank you out and they're gonna push it out. What happens is you go ahead and you sign up for these car payments. You drive the car off the lot. At that moment, your car has taken a two to $3,000 hit because it's no longer new. So you're automatically behind. And as you drive that car, the car starts to depreciate, which at a certain point, you can literally owe more on the car than what you, what, than what it's worth. And many people get like this, like say you buy a car and then you don't put enough money down and then you get in an accident and then you still have car payments for a car you can't drive. This, is, this is happens to many, many people. This happened to me. I wrecked the car and I had car payments on a car I could not drive. One of the things that you should do is pay cash for cars. And I know this is gonna be really, really hard. And we're gonna talk about one of the worst things you can do with buying a car in a minute. You should pay cash for cars. If you make $30,000 a year, you should have a two to $6,000 car. And here's the good news. They're building cars so well that a car that in that price range could be of service to you for many, many years. I mean, it's nothing for a car to get 300, 400, 500,000 miles today. It is nothing. But if you're making $30,000, your car should be paid off. If you're making $40,000, your car should be paid off. If you're making $50,000, your car should be paid off. If you're making $70,000, your car should be paid off. If you are making six figures, you should not have a car payment longer than 12 months, if at all. One of my recommendations, and I've said it a million times and we'll say it again today, if you're making six figures, you should not even have a car payment. You have the economic ability to save up and pay cash for many cars and get yourself a really, really nice car. Now let's talk about one of the worst things that you can do with car financing. You went out, you got you a car, 
based upon your economics. You don't really like this car. You just got it because it's all you could get. Then your money gets a little bit better and then you want to trade this car in. But guess what? You're upside down. So what they do is they roll the negative equity into the new car payment. So you're driving this new car off the lot and you're literally eight to $12,000 upside down. When you're upside down, this means that you owe more on the loan payments than the car is worth. This is one of the worst things you can do is get a car that you hate, finance it, then trade it in and roll that negative equity into the new car payment. And God forbid if you wreck that new car and you don't have gap insurance, because then you will be responsible for that payment because literally since you roll that negative equity into the new car loan, the car will never be worth what you owe. And this is one of the worst things you can do. What got me on the good path was when I got into selling office furniture and I worked with a lot of really financially savvy dudes. And all of them had their cars paid off. Some of them even had their houses paid off. Worked really hard and I made some good sales and I went out and bought myself a brand new BMW and I paid cash for it. I remember the salesman was like flipping out because they didn't really, they didn't want to even sell me that car. Because I, this was back in the good old days when you go to the bank and pull out the cash and the bank actually had the money because I went in there with $55,000 in hundreds. Had me a little, little bag, felt like a little, little drug dealer. And I dumped my money on the table. They really tried to get me to finance. And I was like, nope, nope, I'm paying cash. I'm paying cash, give me the keys, let's do the paperwork. And I finally convinced them to sell me this car paying, you know, with me paying cash. It was kind of a battle. I remember the satisfaction of driving that car off the lot and knowing that it was paid for before I even put the key in it to drive it off the lot. I never had a car payment since. All my vehicles have been paid in cash before I even took them off the lot. Because this is one of the reasons that you want to have a car that's paid off. All cars except for rare exotic models depreciate. And this is a clock. Like I have a BMW X5M, which was like $109,000 when it was new. Currently, I could sell it for... 27 to 32 and it's uh, eight years old. They're all depreciated. I have an Audi S4, which was $50,000 when it's new. I can probably get three, I can probably get 9,000 for it because it's a, a special model. This is why you want to pay cash for cars. They're going to depreciate. Here you are, your car is going down in value. You've got these monthly payments and you have interest. You're paying interest on something that's depreciating. You're paying more money than if you had paid cash on a depreciating asset, and it gets worse if you roll negative equity into it. So my friends, do not finance cars. I want you to make a promise to yourself, and I want you to make a promise to me. At going forward, I am not going to finance any more cars. If you're in a situation, and I know this is gonna sound really extreme, if you have a car with a car payment on it, sell it. And if you have to put some money with it to get the note paid off, do so and get yourself a two to four or five, whatever your economics dictate, a car that is paid off. You, by financing cars, are actually limiting your ability to retire. There was a study done that if you would buy seven cars and finance them, you will delay retirement by 15 to 20 years, or you may not be able to retire at all. Let's do the math on that. Let's say you go out and you buy a $25,000 car. And with the interest payments, once you get through done paying for it, you're gonna pay, you know, pay $35,000, $36,000 for this car. So you've paid 11 grand more for this car. Then you have credit card payments, you have all these other debt payments, and you're paying all of this interest. So your buying power is greatly reduced because you're paying more for things than you have to. Do not finance cars. We don't finance cars around here. We pay cash. And once again, if you're poor, you're going to be driving an older car. Let's just be factual about this. You're going to be driving an older car. 
that's where your money dictates what you drive. Because I know everyone likes to have luxury cars, and this is one of the reasons that if you have low income, you should never, ever buy a luxury car. Uh, my car, my BMW is eight years old, and it had to have some work. My repair bill was $4,500. My Audi had to have some work. I paid, they're, they're just way more expensive to maintain, like the tires. Normal maintenance, like the rear brakes on my, were like 2,000 in the front, no, the front brakes were 2000 the rear brakes were 1500 So that is um, 3500 just on brakes, normal wear and tear. The tires on my BMW are $2,000 for a set of four because they're staggered. When you go luxury, the maintenance, the normal maintenance, not, God forbid, something goes wrong, just the normal maintenance is going to be way more than a regular car. So if you have low income, a luxury car is the last thing that you should be buying. You should stay away from it. You should get yourself a good Honda, a good Toyota, or a Nissan, or something like that. Because you got all these kids, like the big thing is right now is the Dodge Hellcat. And you got all these guys out here buying these Hellcats. And to put tires on this car, it's going to be $1,200 to $1,500. Bucks. Oil changes on my car is like $125, bucks, uh, I think, on both of them. I think $125 for the Audi, I think it's 150 for the BMW because it has a bigger engine that takes more oil and they're both V8s. You should not be buying a luxury car if you have low income. The only time you should be buying a luxury car is when you can go to the dealership and you can write a check. That is the only time that you should be buying a luxury car because if you don't have the economic wherewithal to keep it up, you're, you're going to have one of these gray model cars that's going to be an expensive car and it's going to have tape on it. You, you're not going to be able to maintain it and it's just going to go downhill. And the next person who's getting it is going to inherit a nightmare because you didn't have the money to keep this car up. So no luxury cars for you if you have low income. Glendon, how do I go out and get myself a good car? Glad you asked. I got an answer for you. If you have low income, one of the things, and we'll be talking about this a lot, you should start as a service business. You keep your job. Once again, you, you keep your job. This is a continuation of the things you do to stack up your emergency fund. You keep your job and then you do more. This is how I got ahead in life. I did not do less. I did more. I did not work 40 hours a week. I worked 70 hours a week. You will do more because when you do more, you're able to get more and have more. So you're going to keep your job. You're going to do Uber. You're going to do eBay and all of this money is going to go into a special account. You're going to go to the bank. You're going to open up a new checking account and all the money that goes in this bank will be for the car. It would be like every extra dollar that you earn from your additional income will go in the bank for a car. And after doing this for two or three years, you can get yourself a really nice car and it ain't going to hurt your pockets and it's not going to disturb cash flow. This is one of the biggest problems we have. To go back to the Dodge Hellcat. It's an 80 to $108,000 car and you've got people making 30 to $40,000 a year walking around with 800 to 1200 or $1,500 car payments. That is asinine. That is stupid. That is crackhead stuff. That is dumb because you're sacrificing your financial future to flex right now in a car that is way out of your league. It's too much car. It's too much money for your budget. I used to sell cars. I've seen this all the time. People making 30, 40, $50,000 a year walking out with a 30, 40, 50, 60, $70,000 car. And once again, from me to you, your car should never be better than the place that you live. Rule of thumb, if you're going to have a Ferrari, you're going to have a Lambo, you're going to have a Porsche, it should be parked in a garage of a very nice house. You should drive old cars and get yourself a really nice house. You know why? Because that house appreciates in value. Even though you have a mortgage and you're paying more for the house than if you pay cash, the house is going up in value and you can sell it and make a return on your money. 
You can't do that with a car. So once again, don't be one of these people with an exotic car living in an apartment. That's dumb. Don't be one of these people driving a luxury car with low income. That's dumb. It is beyond stupid because you are, how often are you in your car? You're in your car to go to work. So you may literally be in your car two to three hours a day, max. So that's 15 hours a week. So let's say 60 hours a month. You may be in your car 60 hours a month and that's going back and forth to work and running errands calculate how much your car is costing you. Let's say you're in your car 60 hours per month and your car payment is $800. That's so that's more money than you make per hour to drive your car, which by the way is depreciating. It's going down in value each day that you own it. I've got two luxury cars in the garage right now that are nowhere near close to what they cost when they were new. Now, something else you should do. Let's say you're coming to this channel, it's three years in the future, and you're like, Glendon, I already have the car note. I'm stuck, what did I do? Number one, if you can sell it and get out from under it, do so. If you're in a position where you have negative equity and you cannot sell it, this is one of the things that I did. Um, my BMW X5, it was $109,000. $109, during that time, I've created an online course that has made me $500,000. So I took a hit over here, but I made way more money over here. So essentially, it, we would deduct the depreciation from the 500,000. So I could probably, because I, I don't have low, high miles on it, so I could get top dollar for it. I can get the 32. So let's deduct that $80,000 hit from the 500,000. So I'm still 420,000, well actually way, because I've created multiple courses that have made money. So I am way ahead of the depreciation curve. So you're in a situation where you have a car that's depreciating, you need to have some economic engine that's making money to offset that depreciation. Because this is what happens to the average person. They go ahead, they get a car, they have this depreciation, they don't have an offset, so they lose money, the car goes down in value, and they're in a bad situation. Don't do that. Don't be stupid. So hopefully you got value out of this. Hopefully you will never ever finance another car. You won't do it. Because you're hustling godfather, your serial entrepreneur who knows better, who's only financed two cars in life and the first one wasn't as bad as the second one. The second one was an absolute nightmare. You're gonna do this so you can have a better economic life. Stay away from cars. So if you're in a situation where you have a car payment, you need to have a side business that's above and beyond your job. We're not quitting jobs because job is a way for you to develop, you know, your job, that's the best way for you to get wealthy, the income from your job. So we're going to go out and create a side business. It's eBay, whatever, Uber, Lyft, whatever. You're gonna create this and keep your job to offset the losses that are created by you financing a car. Or are you gonna do Uber, Lyft, Poshmark, eBay, Amazon to create a revenue serve source for you to save up for your next car? This is smart money. This is the way to do it. This is rich people pay cash for cars. Rich people don't finance cars. Rich people pay cash for cars. Rich people, you want to model rich people behavior to become rich. So once again, this channel is built where each video is designed to help you have a better economic life. So subscribe, like, comment, and go to the front of the channel and start watching the playlist, even if it's three years in the future, because you will get economic benefit and the ability to change your life. This is Glendon Cameron, your host of Savage Finance, giving you financial advice that your mom and dad never had. They didn't even know about this stuff. You so lucky. You so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest.
people wanna talk that talk in reality You have not seen me in action You think the come up comes overnight You ain't behind the scenes, trust me, these things don't just happen No shade to Gerald, but G's don't come easy When you tryna eat, I produce it and rapping. I read that contract you sent me to sign But excuse me, I can't help myself, I'm just laughing Hey, you tryna cut out a piece of my pie And I ask you politely, what's it that you offer me, yeah I produce all my own beats And I have no intention of losing my publisher, yeah Independent individual, boy I've been eating off passive residuals, yeah Let's be professional Thanks for your time, but I had to decline at that principle hey, I've been scheming up a plan, hey I've been saving all I can, hey You can call me David Rams, hey The way I handle these fans, hey We ain't messing with the old model, oh. You are a new kid, we full throttle, oh. Just know that the come up is not a flow My amigos, they focus, no one to do After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest Stack it, stack it, stack and put it back in it After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest Stack it, stack it, stack and put it back in it Yo, look